Today is indeed Good Friday and it's Good Friday for us. But 2,000 years ago when, when Jesus was going through his suffering, it wasn't a Good Friday for him. It was a very difficult Friday for him. <clears throat> Today we are reminded once again about the power and the grace of Jesus Christ. Um, last weekend I was in Missouri and uh, Friday I flew in there and I right away got arriving there I got hit with fever and it was getting kind of light but on Saturday um, the fever accelerated to the point where even in the service being there my body would shake and shiver and then I had to do the main service on Saturday night and I remember my head just hurting hurting I took medicine and not and nothing just kicked in I mean I had prayer and everything and at that moment I remembered how physically Jesus felt on the cross how painful it was not emotionally only but physically it was and yet he still fulfilled the will of his father physically in pain but fulfilling the will of his father and not only that but on the cross he was able to lead somebody to salvation and while getting to the cross he healed somebody's ear and that brought me so much encouragement because I mean I cannot explain how much suffering I felt physically it, it was two times in my life that I had that kind of fever and that was that that second time and so and I remember just just this excruciating pain I said Jesus if you could fulfill the father's will being in physical pain I'm not gonna tell nobody I'm in physical pain I'm gonna pretend like I'm fine and I'm gonna go fulfill your will and I remember I got up to preach and I felt just this grace to preach over 18 people testified of physical healing over 20 people gave their lives to the Lord and people from 400 youth from eight different states showed up on that night and the service was about six hours long the Lord just moved and so and it, it was not me because my body wasn't doing well and when the service ended you know it's like when the grace lifts you and I remember I was like a, just a rag I couldn't even get up I was so tired physically and it's interesting when the services ended on Monday morning fever left it's as though the devil wanted to do everything he can to just simply stop me from doing God's will. Why I'm sharing this is the death of Jesus Christ is also a reminder to us as Christians. Never stop doing God's will just because you're in emotional or physical pain. Don't do it because you don't know how God can still use you. Jesus fulfilled the greatest plan of salvation while being in physical pain. Sometimes we have physical sickness or physical pain and we right away think like it's now my excuse to opt out from the will of God and just watch Netflix. Physical pain is not an indication that we should give up doing God's will. It's just a reminder that if my Savior did it, I can do it as well. Can somebody say amen church? As we are approaching communion today, now first of all, a little logistic. I want you to take a communion cup right in front of you. If you're in the first pew, if you can help them to distribute from the sides, there's cups from the sides. If you're sitting on the last pew, the, the ushers will give it to you as well. So I want you to take this communion cup. Please do not open it and do not give it to your children who are not going to be taking communion. This is not a Sunday sn a snack. This is Friday. A Sunday snack. If you can help me raise my microphone just a little bit, please Ryan. Um, and so I want you to just take it right now. Uh, don't, do not open it. Uh, but there is two strips. The first strip opens the top, which this is where you will have the waffle. The first strip. And the second strip will open the second one where there is juice inside. Be very gentle. We are not going to open it right now. So I know some of you are like, I need to test it. I need to test it if it's real. You will have that in just a moment. But please let patience have its perfect work right now. And I want you to just hold it. That's it just hold it I want you to, I want to remind you our first sin as humanity had to do with eating the Bible says when Eve ate there is the verse in Genesis it says their eyes were opened and they realized they were naked I want to read to you second time someone's eyes were open like that it was in Luke chapter 24 verse 30 
and when he was at the table with them Jesus he took bread and gave thanks broke it and began to give it to them then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight it's almost like Jesus with communion was undoing what Eve did with the fruit see when you ate, when you when we ate the fruit through Adam our eyes were open and we realized we were naked but when Jesus broke the bread he gave thanks it's exactly what happens during communion and he gave it to them the Bible says their eyes were open but they didn't see their nakedness they saw his glory the Bible says and they recognized him and then he vanished communion was given to undo the sin in the garden through eating we fell into unrighteousness and through eating we recognize our righteousness in Jesus Christ through eating sickness was unleashed and through eating healing is unleashed through eating all the curses came on this earth and through eating God's blessing begins to come God wants you to eat yourself into good health you're like man sign me up for that diet eat yourself into healing but that I'm not talking about today just eating vegetables and staying away from meat or sugars I'm talking about today eating the flesh of our Jesus Christ by participating in communion I'm talking about today drinking the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ by participating in communion and Jesus says there you will have life when you eat of the tree of knowledge and good of good and evil you receive death you, you recognize you're naked you recognize your shame when you eat of the body of Jesus Christ he is the tree of life you recognize he is your glory he is your righteousness and he is your blessing can somebody say amen in Corinthians in Corinthians in first Corinthians I'm going to read this verse and I will come to the communion in chapter 11 verse 23 says the following for I received from the Lord if you can help me just raise it a little bit more so I could don't have to strain my voice because I'm really excited for Sunday and I don't want to deliver I want to deliver my message with the, all of my vocal cords amen for I received from the Lord what what I have passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after the supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this what whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes so then whoever eats of the bread and drinks of the cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup I want to point out four things first one we during communion look backwards and pastor already mentioned Israel looked forward to the coming of Jesus we look backwards to when he came he says remember this that means during communion we take a moment and we look back at what happened on the cross and we remember what he did on the cross it's very important to always celebrate communion and remember his death not your mistakes Jesus gives you only one thing to remember not your hurt abuse unfortunate situation or something you've done that you feel terrible about he says if you're gonna look back I want you to only see one thing he didn't say remember your past he says remember my blood remember my death so in the communion I look back number two during communion I also look forward he says remember this until the Lord comes Jesus actually said during communion one time is that we will continue to eat communion and we will have that until we get to heaven and then we'll have the first thing we're going to have in heaven is a one heavenly communion I'm pretty sure it's not going to be in plastic cups and it's not going to have little uh, stickers you know to to rip 
it's going to be real it's going to be genuine and this Jesus says in heaven we will have that so each time you take communion you're actually looking forward to a time where you and your savior is going to feast together no longer we're just remembering the past but now celebrating his goodness in his presence can somebody say amen number three not only we look back and we look forward number three we look around what the bible says here which is many times is misinterpreted is it says that many people take communion in unworthy manner now i want you to notice it does not say people who take communion are unworthy people many times every time i came to a communion when i was a younger boy and this verse was read it was always read like this if you are unworthy and you have done something unworthy you know that means you shouldn't take the communion it doesn't say that it says here if you take communion in unworthy manner it doesn't say if you are the unworthy person listen this listen to this it's going to set you free what is the unworthy manner you always want the bible to explain the bible not some tradition the way to always have the bible explain the bible is this is the rule take 10 verses above the verse you're not understanding and those 10 verses or 20 verses will explain the verse you're not understanding for example many people have confusion about what is the blasphemy of the holy spirit and they try to say blasphemy of the holy spirit is when a negative thought comes into your mind about the holy spirit every time blasphemy of the holy spirit was mentioned it was in reference to pharisees crediting miracles of jesus to the devil and jesus responding saying you blasphemy the holy spirit so in the context blasphemy of the holy spirit is not what you say about the holy spirit it's crediting miracles to the devil that's simple because when your bible explains the bible and so in here we see first corinthians chapter 11 it says this and i'm going to read verse 17 and i want you to listen very carefully this is the part that i know we skip a lot because paul deals with the issues in corinth church but this is where the issue of the unworthy manner came from in the following directives i have no praise for you for your meetings do more harm than good corinthians we're not the only ones that struggle with meetings they had meetings and Paul says your meetings do more harm than good and this is why he says in the first place I hear that you come together as a church and there are divisions among you to some extent I believe it no doubt that there have been differences that you show that you show that you have God's approval so then when you come together it is not is it not the Lord's Supper that you eat for when you are eating some of you go ahead with your own private suppers as a result a person remains hungry and another gets drunk don't you have homes to eat and drink in or you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing what shall I say to you shall I praise you certainly not in this matter now communion in the old days were not done like this people actually you know like when you have a get together and everyone brings something to the table that's exactly how communion were done everyone brought something to the table the problem is the poor Christians had nothing to bring because they were very poor so what happened is the rich Christians constantly every time they met together they bring all the food and the poor Christians would eat all the food and that was the communion so what the rich Christians discovered to do is they would bring the food early eat it so when the communion kicks in there's no communion elements and the poor people don't have anything to eat even during communion because they didn't bring anything because they don't have anything and the rich people felt like well finally we ate our own food and Paul is saying he said you're humiliating people who have nothing and he says you're not thinking about others he says you are eating communion in unworthy manner so eating communion in unworthy manner deals with this how is your relationship to your fellow Christians because we don't have a problem with bringing food today but are you mistreating are you humiliating is your heart judge you concerning how you relate to people who are in your faith if that is the case remember this is the body of Christ but this is representation of the body of Christ the real body of Christ is the person sitting next to you you can't be saying I celebrate this but I tolerate you mm -hmm. I love this but I hate you I can't stand you Paul is saying 
you are taking this in unworthy manner actually I'm gonna shock you the first communion that happened that Jesus initiated someone got demon possessed when Judas took the cup and the bread the Bible says Satan entered him during communion why because Judas publicly was saying this inwardly he was a killer he hated Jesus he had this thing where he loved money and because of that during communion instead of receiving healing like the Bible it says in here the Bible says some of you through unworthy manner get sick and weak why because what you do toward other believers opens the door to the power of the enemy or to the power of Christ God doesn't expect us to be perfect but we have to understand communion isn't just about well I love Jesus and I hate you Jesus says that's not how it works you can't go in love my head and hate my body body and head is together and you have to understand this is a conviction for me and this is a conviction for you that you and I as a Christian have to watch our heart and look around how am I treating my fellow brothers and sisters God even once said if you come and bring a gift to me but you remember you have something against someone else he says hold on with the gift figure things out with your heart and then bring the gift to me thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come